Welcome to the fourth episode on the CDP4, and what we'll do today is uh, create building blocks, parameters, and an architecture, which is one of the most basic and most important functionalities of the CDP4. So, first thing that we have to do is connect to a server. So, I go to the Home tab, I click on the Connect button, I put in the name of the server, uh, username and password that is known to you already, and I click on OK. So, I'm loading the data or opening the session. Then I open a model. In the previous episode, we actually created a new model. So I'm going to open that one. So I click on the Open uh, Model button. I go to the Demo model. I say Select Iteration. And I'm going to start working on behalf of the system engineering domain. As you may remember from the previous uh, video, uh, this user has been made a participant in this model and can represent more than one domain, but the work that we will do now is on behalf of system engineering. I hit select, the model is loaded, and then I go to the model uh, tab. And here you see a couple of buttons, but the one we'll be working with right now is the element definition uh, button and the product tree button, because that way I can show you um, what the end result is of our uh, hard work. So you see that this is an empty model, which means um, nobody's added any engineering data to it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, add some building blocks. Um, and of course, I have to tell you what this uh, model is about. We're going to design a simple uh, small satellite. Um, so I'll start by adding a building block, so which is called in uh, TDP4 an element definition, which I will call the mission. So when you create element definitions or building blocks, you have to give them a short name, uh, then a long name. Uh, you have to say who the owner is, and by default, that the owner is set to the domain of expertise that you open the session with. Um, and then we can hit OK. So I'm going to call this uh, not mission because that may be um, too confusing. I'll just call it a space mission. So that would be uh, yeah, space mission. Uh, and it will be owned by the system engineer. So now I already have one building block. OK, not so fancy. So now I have to think about what does my space mission consist out of. So what building blocks go into this space mission? So typically, I would have a satellite. So I create another uh, building block or element definition. I call this one the satellite itself. Again, owned by system engineering. And that's all I will do for now. So now you see that I have two building blocks. Um, sometimes you also uh, want to say something about the launcher. So we can put in a launcher as well. So now I have three building blocks. <clears throat> um, that's all nice. But of course, I have to say something about those building blocks. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add parameters to them. So in order to do that, I go to the reference data tab on the ribbon and I open up uh, the list of parameter types that I can choose. So here you see all the different kinds of parameters that you can use uh, in this model uh, to better specify what it means to be a satellite, a space mission and a launcher. Um, now, what I want to say as system engineers, I'm interested in in specifying what the total mass will be. So I can use the search button to quickly find it. I say, okay, I have something called mass and I drag and drop it on top of the building block that I want to say that has mass. Um, I do the same for the launcher. <clears throat> I have to think about what I'm going to add here. So saying something about, um, let's say the the mass of the launcher itself might not be so interesting. So now I'm looking for, um, let's say, the launch mass that I can actually put on this launcher. Um, I don't really find something that would, would work, but I can add something. Um, so I'm going to create a specialized quantity kind. This is not something that you typically have to do, but for the sake of this demo, I will just quickly do it. Um, I will call this launch mass.
and then I'm going to make it a specialization of mass, which so is a special kind of mass. Um, the default scale will be kilogram and the dimension symbol will be the same as the normal symbol. We'll explain what that means a bit later uh, and now I can add it. So now I have this launch mass available and I can add it to the launcher. So here you see that we've actually done two things. We've made the reference data library a bit richer. So we've added a new kind of uh, parameter type and I've immediately added that to the launcher. Mind you, this is not something that you typically have to do, uh, but I thought it would be good for this video to immediately show that and how easy it can be. So now we've actually said what the launch mass is, what the mass of my satellite can be, um, and then I'm going to say something about my space mission. So maybe I'm going to say something about, the, let's say the date. So we have a launch date for my space mission. I have a, also an end date, so by when the mission is finished. Um, so basically you see that it's really easy to add parameters to a model. Simply finding the parameter in the parameter type list and dragging and dropping it on top of the building block. Um, so I'm going to close that for now. What you may have noticed that in this product tree, which is the place where we will see the explicit architecture form, nothing is there yet. And that's because I haven't yet said what the top node of my architecture is. So what I have to do is I have to select one of the building blocks and say that this is the top node of my um, architecture. So I'm just going to say this is my top element by checking this box. And then you will see that it appears here. So I have my space mission, which has an end date and a launch date. And my space mission basically consists out of a satellite. So I add one satellite and a launcher. So you see that now I have already breaking, broken it down into two levels. So now I'm going to focus a bit on my satellite and I want to say more about my satellite. So what does a satellite typically contain? It typically contains uh, things that have to store power. So I would say it contains uh, a battery. And typically a battery is the responsibility of the uh, power engineer. So I'm going to make the power engineer the owner. Now it's added. Um, it also contains a um, reaction wheel. And that is typically owned by AOG and C. So now you see I've added multiple components to it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these components uh, to my satellite. So I drag and drop them on top of the satellite and see here that they are immediately added. And I have my reaction wheel as well. So that's done as well. So now I have uh, one battery in my satellite and one reaction wheel. But typically we would have more than one reaction wheel. So what you see here is that even though I define my building blocks in this uh, browser, I can also say what these building blocks contain. And these nodes are called element usages and these are called element definitions. So an element definition is defined by the parameters it contains and the element usages of other types of element definitions they contain as well. So that's the way that you model with CDP4. Uh, you do uh, implicit modeling, and you can see that explicit in the architecture view in the product tree. Um, the reason that you can do that is because you want to be able to um, reuse those building blocks. And while I'm looking at this, I see that I made a mistake. I added the launcher to my space mission. Uh, okay, no, I didn't make a mistake. I have a battery and a reaction wheel. I was not focused. Sorry about that. Um, so you see here that I have a battery and a reaction wheel. Um, and what I can do is I can add more than one battery to my satellite. So I'm going to do that, another one. And for sure, more reaction wheels. Typically a satellite contains four reaction wheels to have a three axis stabilized. Um, so now I have four of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of the element usage, and I'm going to call that uh, reaction wheel one. I'm going to call this one 
reaction wheel two. And this one, oops, I didn't want to change the definition. I want to change the usage reaction wheel three and reaction wheel four. So now I've told CDP there are four reaction wheels in my satellite. And again, you can see that they are added here. Um, of course, the reaction wheel also has mass. So I go back to my parameter types. I search for mass again, and I see I find it here. So I'm going to add mass to my battery and also mass to my reaction wheel. So here you see that I've added that mass property. And what you can also see is that immediately those usages also get this mass parameter. So that means that I can reuse the definition battery multiple times as a usage in other nodes. And also here you see in the product tree that uh, these nodes or these uh, elements or building blocks in my explicit tree also have the mass parameter. So now what I can do is I can change the value of the mass. So let's say that at the beginning of the design, even though I haven't done any computations yet, I've done this kind of mission many, many times before. So I'm going to estimate what the mass of this battery will be. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this parameter. And I'm going to say that it has a value of 5 kilograms. And you immediately see also that these nodes turn up bold phase blue, and I will explain that a bit later. Um, so then the next thing is I'm also going to say that my reaction wheel has mass, and I'm also going to show you that you can also do inline editing. So I don't have to pop the details dialog. I can do it also from here. And I'm saying that my reaction wheel has a mass of 6 kilograms. So you see that it's really easy to define an architecture with CDP4 by adding building blocks, adding parameters to those building blocks, adding those building blocks as constituents of other building blocks. So to basically say satellite contains two batteries and four reaction wheels. Um, and then I can also change the values of those uh, parameters. Um, so the next step is to uh, also maybe change the name of these two batteries so that the usages uh, are also unique. So I have bat1 and I have battery2. So now what is important is that all the building blocks are truly unique, which means that I cannot make a mistake when I talk about battery one. It is this battery and not this one. And the nice thing is that if I go and inspect this, I can also see the model code. And here you see that it's sat.bat. So you see it's the battery inside the satellite. And this is, you can show a similar thing, sat.bat2, which is battery two inside of the satellite. So now you've seen how to create a simple architecture with CDP form. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.